from 90 degrees we lay maybe with uh, 75 degrees here and if you stay here on the main deck and you watch other people was working here it's really fun looks like that you drunk the indonesian schooner manu used to sit here in front of Matare bay hotel serving as the dive resorts restaurant and bar until she was rudely relocated when Typhoon Sudal hammered the island of Yap. I had my little uh, handy cam. I was trying to do some videos. I came along this door here where I had water to the knee at the time. I, I walked all the way here. I was holding on the, uh, the pipe there. And I had water to my neck trying to take the video of the ship which was right here. At the time it was the most scary thing because you see the, the ocean level was here outside that's the ocean level and it's just pushing with the wind the wave and it was the most scary thing I mean you see that on TV and you just can't believe I was really really scared and afraid that's the new it's moving to the Monterey building because the wind really strong I was scared that our main must not hit the Monterey building but we can be happy that was not our boat moved from the channel, from the Mandalay building, drifting on top of the rift. That's the place where we are. Needless to say, getting the old girl off the reef was clearly going to take some marine salvage experts with heavy artillery. Enter at this point Sarangal and Sons from Palau a truly class act with the firepower and experience to do the deed. This boat is 150 tons and it's already sucking in the mud. So you have to dig under the keel, close to the keel. The first step is to put up a sea curtain which will keep the silt generated by dredging from seeping into the bay beyond the ship. It will be look like nobody dug here. We'll make it level for the people in Yap because we don't want to destroy the environment. The key to the whole salvage operation are the excavators, and working a project like this requires an expert touch. Mason Whips has been around heavy equipment all his life, so he knows just how tricky things can get in situations like this. I was driving forklifts and things like that since I was... Uh, probably before I could drive a car. Yeah, probably like 14. When you're... Uh Working on like a causeway, how we built out here to salvage the vessel, you don't have a lot of room to turn. And if you, if you make the wrong turn, you can actually put the excavator in the hole you dug. And you don't have the option of using your tracks only to turn. You'd have to uh, be able to turn on a dime, basically, is what you need to do. Or sometimes if you're um, excavating, you actually have uh, the area where your track's sitting collapse. Like underneath here would collapse. I could actually support myself and just walk along without that track touching the ground. Quite a versatile machine. It can do all kinds of things. And so the digging began. The excavators seen here in time lapse almost look like crabs munching away on the sand and coral. Building their own roadway, the excavators spent about a week dredging a basin that would allow the Manu to float on her own. As soon as it seemed like the floating basin was deep enough for the Manu to achieve buoyancy, lines were secured to the excavators and to the Sarangal tugboat. We actually had the tug pulling sideways, and the reason why we had the tug pulling sideways is just to give the boat a little bit of a bounce. That's to free up the bottom, and that lets it slide easier. Most of the pulling was done forward with the excavators. We needed the tug to give it that little bit of bounce. And finally, after four months of life as a 150-ton beached whale, the Manu arrives at her moment of truth. The two excavators and the tug tighten the lines and the pulling begins. Ever so slowly, she slips forward in the muck a little closer to home. One more, one more excavator, we want to pull now with two excavators straight forward, straight forward. The boat already float in front, so nothing stuck between the keel and the ground. We hope everything works well. Yeah. 
When the excavators could pull no more, it was time to do some more digging. We have to dig about uh, maybe 10 feet, 12 feet away from the road. We dig right along the boat there. That way, and we like to dig under the keel so that the boat will don't have to pull, it just drop. After digging along the starboard side of the keel, the next step was to wait until high tide at night and try to pull again. As the two excavators pulled, the old girl made some headway, but it soon became very obvious that there were some issues with the water in the bilge, causing her to list. Being she was laying on her port side this for the last four months, the starboard side was exposed to sun and so the wood has dried out so it's gotten lighter and it's shrank so now there's there's some gaps in the wood and she's taking on water because of that and it's going to take her a few months for the wood to actually expand and get its weight back to where that wood will seal and not leak anymore and bring her back to level. We already prepared six tanks, one each is 1,100 liter. So now we want to start pumping. We need the excavator to lift up the boat with the nylon slip. So, but we have to wait for the tide because the bottom of the boat is still in the mud, in the silt. After filling the auxiliary tanks full of bilge water, the Manu finally rode level in her holding basin. And once again, it was time for her to get jerked around by the excavators in order to gain more freedom of movement prior to her great escape. But this time, the Manu decided to put up a fight and actually snapped a line connected to the excavator bucket. And so the crew connected a new line farther forward, and then the excavators pulled her into position for her journey to freedom. Now that she was truly floating free, the only thing left to do was to raise the dress flags that always signified the start of the weekend in happier times. Once the Manu was decked out in all her finery, the sea curtain was pulled aside and the tug was brought in to pull her back into deep water. Having finally escaped from purgatory, the Manu was towed to a temporary spot at Yap's commercial port, where the crew raised a toast to her freedom at the ship's crow's nest bar. Having been made shipshape and spiffed up, the old girl is now parked at her new berth at Manta Ray Bay Hotel, where she's back to her mission of being Micronesia's most unique restaurant. Uh -huh.